Welcome to your weekly UAS news update, the place where you don't get your news two weeks late. This is the week of April 25th, 2022, and we have four stories for you this week. The first one is the White House is seeking to get more power against drones, if that's even possible. Uh, we'll talk about DJI Inspire 3, there's been some sightings. And then also we'll talk about FLIR that's releasing a new camera that's kind of exciting for those of you that do uh, IR stuff. And then lastly, we'll talk about a place to find local drone restrictions, uh, which uh, we created. So let's get to it. And the first story this week is, well, somewhat surprising, somewhat not, I guess. Uh, the presidential administration is calling on Congress to expand authority for both federal and local government to take actions against drones. Uh, this action plan calls for expanding federal and local agencies that can track and monitor drones flying in the airspace. Now, if you think about it for a second, this is remote ID, right? should be on paper. I'm not sure why we need to have additional uh, restrictions or additional regulation at that level. Uh, the plan would involve creating a ground system that detects drone that can be used for federal and local government. And there was a quote, it says, uh, this was designed to adopt legislation to close critical gaps in existing laws and policies that currently impede government and law enforcement from protecting the American people and our vital security interest. Uh, again, this is exactly what Remote ID is supposed to do so we can keep track of drones from the ground as they are flying in the airspace, especially those that are flying in TFRs and in areas where they shouldn't be flying. Uh, the plan also involves allowing counter UAS operations for certain types of authorities, which, uh, well, at the moment, it's very restricted as to who can take a drone down. Uh, this may not be the case if this actually goes through. So we'll put a link down in the description to the AP News website uh, for the article. Uh, I find this... Well, I find this, you can probably tell how I find this, but uh, this is uh, this is probably not the greatest news for the industry. I think we have enough restrictions as it is. Uh, we don't need anything else added for no specific reason when we've been creating, or we've been, when the industry has been creating uh, a solution with remote ID. So anyways. The next thing this week is DJI. A couple more leaks. We've seen uh, some videos, it looks like, of the Inspire 3. Uh, it's Looks like from a distance, it may be using the Zenmuse X9. That's some of the, the leaks that have been reported. It looks like it's supposed to be released in uh, September, and we'll see if it gets released before the 16th, which is the deadline for manufacturers to have remote ID in their drones. Uh, we'll put a link down to Drone Excel. A friend, Haya, has a lot of great information about uh, all these DJI drones leaks. Uh, there's also information about the Mini 3, which is supposedly going to be delayed. Uh, it looks like it was supposed to be released a little bit earlier. Uh, now, it looks like the next deadline is May 10th. So we'll see, and we'll let you know when uh, we have more information on that. Next story uh, comes directly from AUVSI Exponential. FLIR released a new camera while they were there. Uh, this camera has a 640 by 512 Bosom uh, LWIR uh, uh, sensor, as well as a 64 megapixel EO camera. Uh, it's rated IP54. It's pretty lightweight, 56 grams. Extremely lightweight, actually. And uh, it has 60 hertz video output that can be done via two different uh, platforms. And then hopefully this is a sign that we'll be seeing more drones with new FLIR cameras on them in the future. Uh, so stay posted and we'll let you know on this. And the last story this week, we talked about it last week a little bit, but we created an amazing uh, source for local drone regulation. A lot of you have been submitting uh, new information to add to the wiki. Uh, we're really excited about it. So we've been adding this, we've been adding new places to fly. So if you haven't seen it just yet, make sure you head down and click on the link below. Uh, this is a place where you can find local drone restrictions. This is something that has been an issue for a long time in this industry impossible to find uh, if you can fly or can't fly there. The FAA is one thing, but then you have local restrictions that may pop up. So we are combining all of this into one location. It's a wiki, which means that you can actually go in there and make changes yourself, which is really cool. Uh, you can submit them to us and we'll review them and we'll put them in the system. Uh, you also have a place where you can put your favorite places to fly, which is uh, pretty awesome. A lot of you have submitted stuff as well. Uh, we've been adding photos, we've been adding videos. Uh, you can actually see if the airspace is safe to fly uh, by using before you fly and aloft uh, straight from the website. Uh, and we wanna say thank you to our friends at aloft for this because uh, they've been 
helping with making sure that all of this is integrated on an actual web page instead of having to go to an app. So you can see all of this ahead of time. Uh, this should be helping you a lot when you do planning, when you go fly to a new location. Uh, you can also up and down vote several locations. If you go to the Phoenix page, we are trying to make this the perfect example of what uh, that, um, that website is going to look like in the future. So head down pilotinstitute.com slash drones and you'll see all that information right there. And then also what we have in there is new Facebook groups. So we created 51 Facebook groups for each of the states. And uh, in there, you'll be able to find information about uh, local flights that are happening, meetups, uh, find local regulation as well, which is linked to the wiki. And then, uh, and then we have a couple surprises coming up with these uh, Facebook groups pretty soon. So, so make sure that you go down in the description. We'll put a link to your favorite group and make sure that you join for your specific state if you want to get more information. And the last thing, finally, this week, we are excited to announce that we have released 10,000 free registration stickers. So out there, there's 10,000 drones that have Pilot Institute free registration stickers. We started this a while back because we wanted to combat uh, these registration schemes that are, uh, well, that are basically taking money from people for registering the drone. Uh, 60, sometimes 70, $80 to register your drone when it's only $5. So we wanted to bring attention to people that your registration is only $5, can only be done on the FAA website and we provide you with free stickers in the meantime. So you can go down to pilotinstitute.com slash free and get your own stickers. Uh, we said that we were going to get to 10,000 and then stop. Well, guess what? We're going to continue doing this. It's been extremely successful. Uh, people love them. People love the stickers and we love sending them to you. So uh, with that being said, head over down there if you haven't done so just yet and then send us an email and we'll send you stickers. All right, that's all I have for you this week. Actually, I'm going to do a plug for our airplane news update. Uh, we have uh, some cool stories this week that I think you would be interested in as a drone pilot. Uh, there's been some stuff with the FAA taking action against pilots, and I think this is something that uh, should be, well, something that you should know about. So that's it. That's all I'm going to say. I'll see you next week, and uh, leave your comments down in the description, and uh, have a great week. Mm -hmm.